Facebook and YouTube. Okay. All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Gaijin's Reinventing the Tattoo Community, a place for tattooers, apprentices, and collectors to unite under all things tattoo. We encourage that you join in these live stream events and real world events where we offer an option with connecting with each other for the better. From developer art to down to the technical with your skills, surrounded by like minded peers. You can see us beaming out with events every day from live tattooing to drawing groups and one-on-one -on -one classes. I want to thank everybody joining in from Facebook or Vimeo or YouTube. Um, if you can hear us, feel, feel free to leave a comment to let us know that everything's working good. Um, and of course, uh, anybody that's listening on our podcast as well, thank you very much. Our event schedule and notifications can be found on the free Reinventing the Tattoo app or Google Play Store. Uh, or directly online at community.reinventingthetattoo.com. All these episodes can be found on demand in the folder section. If you can hear us, be sure to tag us in a friend who may benefit from this experience and knowledge as well as yourself. We here at Reinventing Tattoo are beaming out to five channels, 247. So if you go to reinventing247.com, you can enter to win a free goodie bag that has some gifts from Raw, Cheyenne, and Dallas Pro. Uh, for those who don't know, we have several shows, including this one. We have Sunday at 1 p.m. with Jason Lisa. Uh, it's another drawing group where you get to go on and um, draw with him and hang out. We have Sunday at 9 p.m., the Tattoo Weekly Show with Gabe, Lauren, and Jake Meeks of Fireside, where they talk about all things tattoo and go over these past week events. Monday morning at 9 a.m., that is the show here. This is the Reinventing the Tattoo Drawing Group with myself, Kier Franklin. Uh, at 9 p.m. Monday with Guy Atchison. That is his one-on-one -on -one subscribers only class. That is um, one of the most beneficial things that you can get from this resource here. We get to sit down and draw with him and uh, he goes over your work and you get to talk about things, ask questions, and you get to learn a lot of things and to excel all of your art skills here. Uh, Tuesdays at 10 a.m. with Ricardo Sturdivant. That is his drawing group. Uh, he talks a lot about composition and the way that you can view things um, from outside structuralization. Wednesdays at noon is the Tattoo Now show with Gabe Ripley. Thursdays at 10 a.m. is with myself again, Keir Franklin. I do the Thursday morning fundamentals class. If you are introduction to um, art and um, how it relates to tattooing, and you want to learn it a little bit more, or if you've been doing it for quite some time and want to learn some new terms, then feel free to come join in at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Thursdays at noon is the Tattoo Collecting Podcast with Vaughn Baker and Jordan Rukas, and much more content from Andrew, uh, Andrew Malcolm to BJ Betts at courses.reinventingthetattoo.com. Uh, thank you to our sponsors as well, uh, the worldtattooevents.com, updated tattoo events around the world, which I think is so useful for anybody that is a traveler, um, like I want to be myself, it makes it for an easy experience as to who is canceling and uh, who is still going on and what shows are going on and all that fun stuff. Um, thank you to Raw Pigments at rawpigments.co, an acrylic-free vegan um, pigment company that is absolutely amazing. I have nothing negative to say about them. Um, I love their pigments very much. I had all of my, everyone in my shop start using them, and they kept saying how it's just the most saturated pigments they've ever used. So feel free to check them out at rawpigments.co. We have dermalizepro.com, helping tattoo clients around the globe. Uh, Gabe Ripley from Tattoo Now at TattooNow.com, helping tattooists for 25 years now and continuing to do so with so many resources and websites and all that fun stuff. And of course, GuyAgerson.com, we need to thank him. Uh, you can find his machines, prints, paintings, books. Uh, for If you want to give a gift to another tattooer, they have many resources there at GuyAgerson.com. And of course, thank you to our affiliates, EcoFriendlyTattooSupplies.com, Apprenticeship Diaries, and Fireside Tattoos. And of course, uh, our real world events that are happening for next year, um, ones that are upcoming. We have uh, Hell City next May, next July is River City Tattoo Invitational, next October is Paradise Tattoo Gathering, 
And um, I know Philadelphia is coming up soon in February and um, the Explorer Tattoo event as well, which I think is so rad. Um, if you like to host, go to management at reinventingthetattoo.com. Definitely looking for more people to host things and put on more shows and all that fun stuff. Um, but feel free, everybody, to start joining in. Um, let me see all our comments here. Good morning to Caroline Evans. Good morning to Bruno. Good morning to everybody that is here and viewing this today. I do apologize that I've been out the last couple weeks here. Um, we had Thanksgiving and then I unfortunately got the Rona. Um, so, better time as ever to explain the experience, right? Um, so, I had gotten it at Thanksgiving and um, I think I started having symptoms like uh, Thursday, Friday, Thursday. So, like four days later, I started having symptoms. And uh, uh, my symptoms being that I lost my taste and smell and uh, other cold like symptoms. Um, not a lot of sneezing, runny nose, coughing, vaccinated, so uh, it wasn't as torturous of an experience as it could have been. Um, but I think I definitely knew I had it before I had it uh, with the no taste and smell. I think that was an absolutely weird experience to go through, to be able to drink lemon juice like it was water, pretty much. Um, <clears throat> so I had taken the last couple of weeks off due to that. But we are back on um, starting this week with all of that stuff. Um, and we have everybody here on Facebook as well. Good morning. Um, asking where am I from? I do apologize. I did not mention where I'm from. I am being out of Western Massachusetts. And um, it is very cold. So it's very cold and very rainy. <laughs> And uh, today, today I am working on some tattoos for the week. Sundays and Mondays are the days to work on all tattoos that are upcoming for the week so that I'm most prepared. So um, I'm actually doing right now a very basic line of uh, this girl that wants a ring of mushrooms around her kneecap which is oof. <laughs> um, so right now we have just the basic structuralization of it. I will show here. Uh, she wants it in full color. She wants both knees and she does have previous tattoos already. She has other colored tattoos. So it does not very nerve wracking for me as far as how she's going to take it. Um, and if you hear a lot of rustling, that's just my cat. It's, He's very excited for some reason. Uh, but what's the, that's what we got there for right now. Basic structuralization of her kneecap and kind of getting everything in line there. Uh, the process for this. And I really wanted to try those 3D model uh, type things that are going on. I was hoping that Jason Leeser would join us today because he knows a lot about that technological stuff. So I wanted to ask him a whole bunch of questions about those 3D models. But for anybody listening out there, I definitely want to ask if you guys have started using those and uh, drawing up your tattoos that way or how you've been able to scan the body pretty much to make a 3D model of the client. I've seen so many videos and um, a lot of tattooers that are doing it themselves, and it's absolutely amazing. Uh, Caroline Evans says, uh, uh, New Jersey can't figure out if it's supposed to be winter or spring. The weather has been so up and down. I completely agree. Uh, it was like 60 degrees here the other day, and then the day before that it was snowing, and can't decide what it wants to do. I completely understand with that. And then let's see here. And... And then on Facebook, we have here, I'm a slim guy and I don't work out, but want to get tattoos. What do you reckon about that? 
I mean, I've tattooed lots and lots and lots of slimmer um, built people. And I mean, as far as I don't know what you're you're so much like worried about as far as like um, pain wise, uh, placement wise. I mean, I always tell all my clients every day when they ask, is this going to hurt? I say all tattoos hurt. Um, just, no matter what, you're going to feel some sort of pain, uh, some sort of spiciness, as I call it. And um, no matter what, that's that's going to be happening. So if you're worried about that because you're slimmer, then you know don't don't worry about that so much because everybody everybody deals with pain with tattooing, no matter what. And sometimes when I tell my clients that you know this is going to hurt, it actually gets them in the mindset of oh boy, this is going to hurt. And when I actually tattoo them, they're like oh this really isn't that bad. So um, it all depends on the person. I've had some people take rib tattoos like champions and then I've had some people take wrist tattoos like I'm selling off their hand. So that's, <laughs> it's all on, a, on your own personal experience and perspective of it. Um, I actually had my first client ever that was giving me a real runaround. And um, I guess this is a good question to all tattooists out there. And I talked about this on Ricardo's class of what you do as a tattooer or a client when you know the pain of getting tattooed or tattooing is gets so extreme that how do you calm yourself as a client and as a tattooist how do you help your client get through it as best as possible and i've been trained to do several different things uh, to help them out this client that i had was getting a tattoo on uh, their calf and I won't get into any more specifics than that, but um, what was basically happening was that she was very much freaking themselves out uh, more than it you could ever describe and pretty much hyperventilating to a point, uh, freaking out on the table there. So, you know, you have to get into a, um, a real state of helping this person out to get them through this tattoo so they don't hyperventilate and pretty much make themselves pass out. So I go step-by-step -step process. At first, I try and lighten the mood. Um, and Ricardo has explained this when we talked about it on his class that, you know, lightening the mood with some comedy or trying to make them laugh, telling them stories, like letting them know that I know that you're in pain and it's okay. And, you know, you can express yourself the way you need to if that's what's going to get you through this. Um, and then usually, you know, that doesn't work. That's usually very temporary because uh, after a while they really aren't listening to you. So then usually next step is um, I tell them to count sheep. I'll always tell them to, you know, if, if it's really that extreme for you, then what will happen is as soon as I enter the skin, as soon as you can feel the needle hit your skin, I want you to start counting. I want you to start counting sheep, and I want you to start picturing what these sheep look like in your head, and I want you to start counting them jumping over a fence. And as you're going to stop counting as soon as you stop feeling me in your skin, and then you're going to start over again as soon as you can feel it again, and so on and so forth. That that, in my opinion, is one of the most uh, successful ways that I've distracted clients other than um, those studios that have TVs and stuff in their booth. I think that is an amazing idea. Um, so that did work for quite some time. And if that doesn't work, uh, I usually completely stop tattooing them and... Uh, we both kind of, I get them into a meditative state almost, like we just sit there and breathe. And I explain like, okay, like understand that I can't continue to tattoo you if, you know, you're going to start hyperventilating and uh, freaking yourself out. So we're going to sit here and we're going to, we're going to breathe together. We're going to do this and it's going to be okay. It's going to be wonderful. You know, you're going to get through this just as much as I am. Okay. And I think it's truly letting your client know that they are not alone in this experience um, because I know tattoos hurt. I have so many of them. You can ask Ricardo. I'm not a good sitter. Um, so it's, it's definitely letting your client know that they are not alone in this situation. And that will calm them down more than you could ever imagine. Um, 
So, because it lets them know that, you know, because obviously they're going to feel embarrassed that they're screaming on your table and moving and, you know, not making it a good experience for you as a tattooer. But uh, truthfully, and they very much enjoyed the fact that I did not really show much emotion for it. Like, I didn't get upset. I didn't get angry. I didn't, you know, um, completely stop tattooing them and kick them out. Like, I just, you know, tried to help them get through it as best I can. And I tried to help them get the best tattoo that I could give them with the struggles that they were giving me. And um, I think I, that's one of those things as a tattooer that if you are not, um, if you're thinking you want to be a tattooer and you're not thinking about that aspect of things, then um, then unfortunately you should probably think of a different career to take because that's going to happen more often than not. Uh, not every client is going to be that perfect client that has the perfect skin and just sits there and has great conversation and tips you well and then sometimes brings you cookies. Um, that's not always the case. Those come far and few between in your beginning stages of life. And then later on, you get those regulars that, you know, will be that amazing. But until then, you know, you have those clients that may be a little bit more difficult and there's nothing wrong with that, but you have to make sure that you're trained in a way that you know how to handle it, A, and B, that you know how to handle it yourself. And that's a very important factor of it. Um, we just got a question in here. What was your craziest client experience? Uh, I mean, I think that one pretty much was. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had too many uh, crazy clients, I don't think. Um, that one, I, I think, wasn't so much crazy, but just a little bit more um, wherewithal. I've had clients where um, it was my third day working at this shop, and the shop that I've met now. And uh, it was a, a young kid that came in and wanted a, somebody's birth and death year uh, in Roman numerals on the top of their thigh. Simple stuff. Uh, awesome. I have a process that I go through when somebody wants dates or names that I print the stencil out or I print it out on a piece of paper, obviously. And um, I make them sign it. And <clears throat> as far as, is this correct? Is this spelling correct? Are these dates correct? I make them sign the piece of paper and then I staple that to their paperwork. Uh, so he signed it, so the dates are right. I put it on his side, looks great, started tattooing it, got halfway through, and he realized that the end year was wrong. And uh, that's immediately when my tongue went to my chest. And <clears throat> I took a deep breath, and I was like, okay, uh, it was only off by one year. So I just had one extra little eye. And uh, I said, all right, that's fine. Uh, let's figure this out. So what is this person's initials? And they said that their initials are RL. And so I just made that last little I and R and made an L right next to it in the same font and saved this kid's tattoo. <laughs> and it, I saw the light go back into his eyes and he was like, oh, thank you so much. And I was like, no, man, thank you because... <laughs> Because we're both going through this right now. <laughs> so I think every single tattooer has a story about how they've accidentally misspelled something or didn't realize something when they did lettering or a date or something like that. Um, it's an absolute human experience. And uh, I think that's one of the cool things about tattooing and how great it is to have a client that was so... He was so calm about the situation and knew <laughs> it was not uh, either of our faults here, um, that it was just miscommunication on the date. And uh, that's honestly the craziest client I've had. I've seen um, my boss that I have now, he had a crazy client where at the end of the tattoo, the client um, kissed his tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like full blown um, mouth to tattoo, kissed it afterwards, freshly wiped and everything. It was like, oh god! And my boss was like, oh okay, let's 
not do that here. <laughs> but other than that, I haven't really had the net. Knock on wood. Where's my wood? Because <laughs> I don't need any crazy clients anytime soon. Even though they're such a hoot and make for amazing stories, in the moment, it's very whew. Uh, another question came in, is there any tattoos with clients that you got really attached? Um, yeah, I, all, I have a couple regulars that I actually very, I get very, very excited to see. Um, I have, I work in a big college town. Uh, we work in, I work near the University of Massachusetts or one of them. And um, we actually work in the radius of like two other colleges as well. So we, my studio takes care of a lot of college kids. So obviously move-in day is very, very, very big for us because, you know, 18 year olds wait five minutes after their parents leave to go to the tattoo shop with their parents' credit cards and decide to get tattoos. So um, I've made a lot of really awesome clients that way. Um, and I have um, three girls that come in religiously every three weeks to come not only get tattooed by me, but to just come hang out and um, love coming to the shop and seeing the environment of the shop and knowing that they feel at home at the shop. Um, I have a couple that comes in, like I said, every three to four weeks to get tattooed. They always want like smaller stuff, but they're slowly getting pretty filled up. Uh, and I think building those kind of relationships is one of the coolest things about tattooing. You know, not for nothing, all the crazy clients and the um, clients that don't really sit the best and all that fun stuff. But at the end of the day, it's really those clients that come in religiously and, and just like want to hang out with you and generally enjoy the environment and are, are really, really cool people um, that you really love to hang out with. Um, but as far as the attachment part, I'm only attached to one piece that is on a really good friend of mine. Uh, it's a giant uh, spirited away tattoo and I love all things Studio Ghibli. So his tattoo is, is really, really touched my soul. <laughs> and he loves it too. So it's absolutely amazing, but he has not been in in quite some time. Uh, so it gets a little nerve wracking, but I am not one of those tattooers that has, is doing giant back pieces yet, which I'm sure is more attachment sort of to uh, having them come in more religiously or when you don't see them for like half a year and you only have like just the outline done, you get a little nervous. You're like, are they ever going to come back? <laughs> uh, so thanks for sharing. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you may have to help me out with pronouncing your name correctly, just so everybody knows. I don't want to say it wrong. I have a name that also can easily be said not uh, wrong, so I don't want to be disrespectful and pronounce it wrong. So if you could help me out a little bit so everybody knows who you are that is commenting here, that would be absolutely fantastic. Um, let's check our YouTube and everything like that. Say good morning to everybody. And, oh my gosh, do we have, we have Melissa. Oh my God, Melissa, I didn't know you were here. Why didn't you say something? <laughs> uh, normal, normal quiet lurker, that's, that's me. <laughs> uh, hi, Melissa. Thank God. <laughs> I thought I heard somebody dinging. Uh, I'm doing great now that you're here. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh boy, thank God. I was like, I'm running out of topics. <laughs> it's always easy when there's two, right? It really is. It's very difficult to just sit here and be like, yeah, so like today's Monday. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we know it is. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, all right, everybody. We have Melissa Sink here. Melissa, would you like to tell us where you're beaming out of? Uh, I am in Oregon, so West Coast. Um, and it is early, here, so. early in the morning, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And you've been working on this little painting here. Let me see if I can, if I can be allowed to spotlight here. My quality is of, of a, what should I call it? 
camera is very much lower than it usually is because I'm not using, I don't have a computer to use as nicely as I did before. So I don't, I have a Google Chrome now, so I don't know if I can do as much as I could. <laughs> That's fair. But, <laughs> but you've been working on this painting for a hot minute. It's looking like it's really coming along. It looks amazing. Thank you. It's uh, nowhere near finished. <laughs> nowhere near finished. All right. What do you got to do to it so far? Uh, I have no clue because I don't start these things with an actual plan. I just kind of keep going. <laughs> okay. So, like, how do you, do you have, like, an end result in your head and you're like, I'll figure out how I get there? Or do you just have, like, a general idea of what you're looking for and then you kind of search for it? Uh, I get the basic composition laid out, and then I have fun. All right. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I I feel so technical now. <laughs> I usually will like do a whole rendition on the Procreate, and then stencil it on the canvas, and then like get all technical with application. And oh gosh, your idea seems so much more fun. <laughs> You know, if it were client work, that would be different. I would have, you know, some sort of plan, some sort of more than just layout. But painting, I try to keep very loose and very free because um, that is my happy place when my brain is stuck on other things. That's awesome. Well, <clears throat> that's amazing that that's how your thought process is. And let me ask you this then, because I know there is a difference, right, for myself at least. When you're painting for fun, that is a different mindset from when you're painting for a commission or a client, right? Entirely. Entirely, right? So I had a, I had posted a portrait, which in my opinion was not like a great portrait that I've done. But I posted this portrait I did with Big Pen, and... Um, pretty much a, I had somebody message me and was like oh my gosh I would love to have one of these um can you do x y and z and then obviously we go through the consultation blah 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 but I I had let them know that like what I had posted as a portrait was a general practice like it's there's very, many mistakes that I can witness in this and yours yours is going to be much more technical and you know completely different process of things and um, obviously the, she was like, oh, that's perfectly fine. I don't, I don't care. And I only explained that because I knew them. Um, but it's, it's very much different from when you're just practicing with no intent to when you're actually making a piece that somebody you're charging somebody for. And a complete difference, right? There's a lot more pressure to it. Um, which is why typically I do not do commission as far as painting goes. Um, now I can have somebody say, hey, I really like this. Can you do something in that genre? That's about as technical as I get with it. But I try not to do any commissions whatsoever paint wise. If they like it, they buy it. That's just it. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> I agree with that 100%. And I usually don't do commissions for paintings. It's it's because of the different mindset. It's because of, you know, I'm doing it for me. I'm not doing it for somebody else. Um, and that changes how open and freeing it can be. Uh, whereas if you're doing something for somebody else, you're constantly worried about how they're going to perceive it. If you're going to have to change something when you're like 80% done. Um, so it's one of those things I just, I don't do it. <laughs> Yeah, I completely agree with that. Um, any painting I post, it's this is what it is. If you want it, buy it. <laughs> if you don't, that's fine. I like it. That's why I painted it. <laughs> so yep. it's fairly fine if I keep it. <laughs> I have this really horrible attachment issue with my paintings. Because, um, you know, I, I have the idea that I dump so much energy and time into these paintings. And then when I, I'm just not ready to ever let them go. Like uh, somebody will be like, I really, really want to buy this. How much? And it always takes me a second to message them back because I'm like sitting with my painting be like, this is it. <laughs> we have to, we have to let you 
go. You have to go now. You have to go off and, and do your thing. And <laughs> you have to be good on somebody's wall and it's going to be okay. And, <laughs> and I've been told many, 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 many times to not have any sorts of attachment to your artwork. And I agree to it a, a certain point, but uh, there's always that, you know, inside feeling of just like, well, oh, but... <laughs> This is mine. Well, especially when you're doing a piece that's deeply personal, you know. Um, when mm, yeah. I was younger, I had that same attachment. I do occasionally at this point, but it's more or less, I want to show it off in my shop for a little bit, and then I'm okay with getting rid of it. Perfectly fine. Um, and I think it's still like that residual little bit of attachment I have to the art after I've done it, but beyond that, you know, I look at it as, okay, well, somebody else wants it, you know, for their own viewing, you know, which means other people are going to see it, you know, whether it's in their house or their studio or whatever. And I'm okay with that. Yeah, absolutely. Do you want to explain to us, like, what, what your mindset is for this painting that you have going on right now? Um, I don't... It's kind of one like of those a, things a where background I, story. Uh, no backstory. I started, I started with just the background and just started painting it. When I do acrylic, one, I don't typically tend to do landscape ever. So for acrylic, for me, it's it's kind of a more of a freeing process. Um, I'm not really worried about the outcome of it. Um, I love fantasy like creatures, so I went that direction as per usual. Um, just trying different things. Uh, when I was in college, actually, I, I hated, <laughs> absolutely hated landscapes. Um, but it's good to be in practice of it because, you know, every so often you wind up with a tattoo that you have to do some bit of landscape in, and you're like, I don't know how to do this. So it's kind of a practice in that as well. Well, that's amazing, Melissa. You're always so soft-spoken. <laughs> <laughs> and for those who don't know out there, it's a funny story that Melissa actually took a, cl a class with my boss that uh, I am working with right now, right before he hired me. And uh, I think I think partially that is the reason why I got hired. So thank you, Melissa. <laughs> uh, I made that decision before I ever knew who it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just thought that to this day, I, I just remember him, him coming into my booth and being like, hey, man, do you know a Melissa? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, Melissa who? And he's like, Melissa Sink. I was like, yeah! <laughs> 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 I'm just so red, man. <laughs> and he's like, wow, well, okay, all right. And I was like, yeah, see, I know people. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we got uh, the man that is a legend. We got Ricardo Sturdivant on here <laughs> joining us What's with his Ricardo? giant painting. What's <laughs> up, guys? Good morning. Good morning, Ricardo. How you doing, buddy? Pretty good. How about you? Good, now that everybody's here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> much better now. Much more relaxed now. <laughs> I know. Whenever it's just you by yourself, you're like, panic. Panic. Fear. I'm just having <laughs> sitting here having heart palpitations. Like, all right. <laughs> so, what are we gonna talk about? Mm. Um, I'll make my life way more interesting sounding. <laughs> yeah. I watched and the it Simpsons is. Last night. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So everything's going pretty good. <laughs> That's awesome. What are you working on today? Uh, well, I have tattoos to do today. But uh, I figured I'd jump on today and work on this painting a little bit while we're hanging out. Um, this is um, a painting for my son for Christmas. It's one of Aww. his favorite favorite musicians. Nice. So, yeah. It's all acrylic. Uh, I heard you guys talking about acrylic earlier. I think I got about five hours in on this so far. Um, I'll probably try to wrap, wrap it up in the next couple of days. Um, there's going to be more layers and stuff like that to it, like some graffiti kind of layering to it where you can see some of the other paintings that might be underneath you know different sections of other paintings and stuff like that 
Um, so I think that'll be fun to do that with the uh, glazing mediums and the um, and on and working with acrylics to make it look kind of like an oil and kind of effect. So it'll be fun. I like your contrasted colors you have there, bud. Thanks. I appreciate <laughs> them. Shit. <laughs> I like that red and green, that complimentary palette you got going on, buddy. That's amazing. <laughs> one color jumps to the other one, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We like both feed off each other. Yeah, yep, exactly. Yep. It's so it's pretty still fun. Think need like, a, I think what? I need a little teal, but that's okay. <laughs> there's actually, <laughs> believe it or not, there's actually teals underneath some of these greens. Oh, beautiful. See, here you mm -hmm. have it. That's Amazing. Oh yeah, I can I can actually see the teal and stuff there. Yeah. Yep. Fantastic. You've been doing a lot of like color studies with portraits, like that one that you posted uh with the pens, the like color portrait you do with the pens. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, been pretty fun. You know, um before last before this year actually I guess I would say that like I would uh kind of just grab colors that I've thought would make sense you know with no reason or anything like that no intention behind it but like this year i've been being a little bit more intentional about what the colors that i'm choosing to use and where i'm trying to use them and uh it's been pretty fun to explore that that path that um intentional path you know what i mean yeah you learning anything <clears throat> new in art sometimes is terrifying but once you get a grip onto it it makes the road a little bit easier right <laughs> exactly exactly yeah well fantastic tis the season right for paintings like <laughs> yeah <laughs> It really is, isn't it? Tis the painting season. Yeah, this is painting season. This is I've painted more now than ever before. And uh, we have a question here for you, Ricardo. Uh, what's the painting about? Uh, if he can elaborate, so I guess more so what the musician is, and yeah, artist your son's favorite. Um, it's a, an artist named Juice World. Uh, my son really digs him. Um, a lot of younger kids, a lot of, a lot of younger generations into it. I hadn't heard about him until my son started bringing him up. And uh, I guess he really gets into it, you know what I mean? So I've been trying my best to, like, uh, open my mind to a lot of different things. So, like, I've been delving into his music and stuff like that, especially for his painting, trying to find ideas for uh, the illustrative part of the, the painting, like what elements I'm going to put into it. And I think what I'm going to do up here is do this, like, globe that's kind of melting down into his dreadlocks and stuff like that and kind of coming off, off into the bottom of the thing. I don't know if you can see the bottom of it, but it's like kind of dripped. So I'll, I'll put more, these are like just water, real thin water acrylic right now. And um, I'll go through and start doing some of the skulls and his necklace and stuff here pretty soon, but I'm trying to bulk up all the big parts right now. But um, eventually I'll go through and intentionally draw some paint drips and stuff like that, or paint some draw, uh, Paint some drips. Goodness, I can't talk today. <laughs> and then um, so you know. we're going to do some, I'm going to do some butterflies and stuff like that, kind of going through and a, a halo up at the top of where his finger is at, up there at the very top, like he's drawing a halo in the air. Um, it's a lot of like, from the, the, the subject matter will be from a lot of the lyrics and stuff like that in the songs and stuff. Um, and do some like outer space stuff like that. So it'll be pretty fun. Does that answer That's the question? That's awesome. Yeah, I think so. Does he know at all what the process is, or is it going to be a complete surprise? Uh, I think it's going to be a surprise. I, I, don't, I don't think he watches the, the YouTube stuff that I do, so uh, maybe after I'm done with this, I'll be like, hey, so I did all this stuff on YouTube, and maybe you can check it out, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so he's, He'll be 21 this year, you know what I mean? So it's pretty, he's into his own thing, you know what I mean? It's, I remember being that age and having my own my own likes and my own interests even as much as I do now but it's pretty cool to you know kind of be involved with it and lately I've been dropping like little lines to him like out of the lyrics and stuff and you're like what how do you know that song yeah that's the wildest thing that whenever like I'm just walking around my parents house and they say something that's like of my generation and I'm like wait what <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's pretty fun, isn't it? You're like, oh, what are you doing? What are you fucking doing, man? 
like my mom said lit the other day and I was like, what? <laughs> I'm like, no, mom, don't say that. <laughs> you don't even know what that means, mom. Stop. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. crazy. Yeah. Like, so did I say it right? And I'm like, no. <laughs> the funniest well, thing that, that I think I ever heard was a friend of mine tell me that his, like, three-year-old son one day was going off about the, the dogs that they have. And he used the word mf -er and and shit at the right time and the right you know about these dogs he's like these mf and dogs dad shit and he's like, he, was like, he goes i didn't know what to do he goes i didn't know if i should laugh or if i should like tell him don't say that shit but i was in complete shock that he used them at the appropriate point of sentence and stuff too. I was like oh, that's great dude you're raising them right i guess <laughs> Yeah, you never know what to do when a child swears at an age that they shouldn't be. You're just like, right. I really want to laugh because this is hysterical. But at the same time, yes. I really shouldn't be condoning this behavior. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. Exactly. <laughs> it's, I think it's a, more of the fact that they're swearing, like, just out of the blue, and it shocks you just as much as it shocks them. Like, <laughs> But they want to just fit into the society so badly <laughs> that they'll just... They'll just go wild, and it's like, oh my god, kid, <laughs> that's insane. Oh, we lost Ricardo. Oh no! <laughs> Back to just you, you, me, and Melissa here. That's all right. Melissa can keep talking about how she doesn't like to paint landscapes. <laughs> <laughs> Even though she's painting like a wild landscape. It's that that's the thing, you know. Sometimes when you have something that you don't like doing early on, you wind up like working with it in such a way that you start to enjoy it. Yeah, I see. And I'm gonna ask in your as a landscape painter now that you are. <laughs> Not hardly. Uh, what when you applied so like your first layers of this? Did you do the landscape painter thing of putting black down on your um, hard harder surfaces, and then now you're applying color over it? No. <laughs> no. Uh, I literally started with just the gradient that's back here. So I oh, went okay. top to bottom and just blended everything, pulled the colors that I wanted to do. Um, I tend to do <clears throat> things that have waterways. Um, I'm not entirely sure why. It's just, it's fun. Uh, so I break up the landscape with waterways and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I literally just covered it with, uh, <clears throat> with the color that's in the gradient here. Oh. <clears throat> well, I will say it absolutely looks beautiful and that little creature that you have there is amazing you have to name him i do yeah yeah I, I have a name I, figured it out yet. I do have a little oh, i do have a tendency to to name things um my one of my adopted daughters she made me this really cute octopus plushie like hand stitched it hand painted it the whole nine and so I have it at my shop and it's sitting up in this um, at the top of the big bookshelf that I have in the front. And he's looking out the window. Uh, and the first thing I had to do was name him. And his name is Rupert. <laughs> oh, <coughs> that's an amazing name for it. I, I have these Rupert. awful names that happen. I uh, have anytime I, I tattoo or paint or anything like that, some sort of character, I always name it. So anytime that I'm tattooing like a little character of some sort, obviously if it's not a cartoon character that already has a name, but um, it's been very common and I've talked about this before, how everybody likes to have uh, tattoos that look like kindergartners through it and a lot of them are little characters. And oh, right. uh, I always say like uh, in the middle of them in pain, I'm like, so like, what's his name? What's, his <laughs> <laughs> what's their name? What's their occupation? What are they doing right now? And um, I don't know if I have a picture of it anymore, but I did this tattoo of a, uh, it was like a skeleton mosaic uh, fine art piece that's already been made. Um, it was actually on the floor in, um, uh, what's that place? What's that place? Pompeii. 
uh, on the floor in one of the Pompeii houses. And uh, it's literally just a mosaic skeleton holding two jugs. But the way he's holding it, his arms are down and his mouth is open. So I was like tattooing her and I was like, it kind of looks like he just showed up to his house and it, his house just wasn't there anymore. Like, it's like <laughs> both of his arms are down and the jugs are like completely to the side as if the water would be dumping out and his mouth is just completely open. <laughs> and it just looks like <laughs> he just completely showed up to his house and it wasn't there. And she thought that was the most funniest thing ever. And <clears throat> It's pretty cool now because now she has that um, to think about for her tattoo now, which I think is amazing. Because <laughs> it really does look like that. Let me see if I can actually find it. Let's see here. Uh, skeleton mosaic. Oh, there it is. Oh, wow. It really is. That simple to find. Thank you, Google. Man, stuff must have been more difficult to find in back in the day. <laughs> that, that all right, let's see. The library and all that stuff, you know, back then. All right, can you see it, kind of? Let's see here. Yeah. Again. Yeah, so this is a little dude I tattooed, but, like, just the... <laughs> I don't know why he's so funny looking, but <laughs> he just looks like completely that he just showed up to his house and it's just not in existence anymore. <laughs> he has like, an expression of that one moment where it's like, <laughs> what am I walking into? It's like, wait, what? It was just here. What are you talking about? <laughs> I just went to get water for four minutes and it's not here anymore. What are you talking about? <laughs> utter confusion but i do that with a good majority of my uh character tattoos i love doing that and that character that you are drawing here it is a lion lamb dragon correct with snake tails <laughs> with snake tails is this something that you created yourself or is this from like some sort of mythology of sorts uh, I kind of pulled from some reference and thought, you know, it'd be kind of cool to do this and this. Uh, not by any means a completely original creature at all. Um, but that's why I'm painting him, to make him mine. Oh, so this one's going to be an at-home painting? A for you uh, painting? I don't know. I might take it to the shop when I'm done. I might put it up for sale when I'm done. I don't know. Oh, some people that liked it, so it was like, okay, well, don't try and, <laughs> don't try and buy it before I'm done with it. Yeah, <laughs> like wow, I really like that. Let me know when it's done. It's like, um, <laughs> once again, if this is mine, <laughs> and then when you finish uh, I, it, I've had, it's, I've it's, had people ask me how much for it, and I'm just like, yeah, um, it's not done, so let me get back to you on that. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I have no idea how much to sell this for, actually. Because then you sit there with it, staring at it for a second, you know, after you're done with it, and you're like, how much would I sell this for? I'm like, right? I, I don't know. <laughs> Which There's sometimes is, it, it, that's why it takes me sometimes a long time to even respond to people that want it, because I'm just like, I, I don't know. Like, there's one painting on my website that literally says, make me an offer. <laughs> yeah. Like, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Make me an offer I can't refuse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And after a while, I mean, after a while of having a painting, I will want to just be like, all right, can somebody just buy this? Because <laughs> right. sitting here, <laughs> I have uh, the my Pan's Labyrinth painting. I still have that. And it's coming up on a year of me having it. And uh, it's, yeah, it's gotten to the point of just like, all right, man, can somebody buy this already? Cause <laughs> <laughs> I really like the cardinal that you had up on your Instagram. I thought it was really cool. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I saw that wood panel. It was, I got that wood panel at Michael's for like 
four dollars, I think. And I was like, oh, come on. <laughs> that was like one of those things where you go into Michael's for like a pencil and you're walking by the wood panels and you see that and you're like, Hi. All right, I'll go get a cart. <laughs> Moment you find that one thing and you go to get that cart, you know you're doomed. Yeah, especially this this time of year, because this time of year, Michaels has, like, one of the greatest deals on the planet. Like, they really do have good deals. So it's almost like you have to ignore Michaels during the holidays because your cart will just be full of things. In any art supply store, you're just like, come on, but there's so many good deals. And it starts at, like, Cyber Week and then on from there. And you're sitting there going, come on. Come on, really? <laughs> yeah, I I think, so, and this could be, if you do know this, uh, answer to this question. I used Imvar on that Cardinal. <clears throat> And it was my roommate's hand bar, and I've never used it before. And uh, she's like, yeah, this, this stuff will really easily bring up the saturation. I've seen the videos of it, of people, like, pouring it on, and, like, it looks amazing and everything like that. But when this dried on this painting, it left, like, very foggy streaks on it. Oh, no. And I'm like, that's, I'm like, that's that's not supposed to happen. I was like, what? So I don't know if I did it wrong or used the wrong kind or I don't know if there's like different ones for wood paneling and different ones for um, canvases or what. And I don't know if you've used Gambar before to help me out with that. So I have Gambar, the gloss, the satin, and the matte. Um, it was the I'm satin one. Okay, so the satin one is like you're in between a gloss and a matte. If you're used mm -hmm. to gloss and like absolutely no um, no haziness to it, then that's what you need to use. Uh, the satin, like with the gloss, you're going to wind up with a lot more shine back on your stuff. With the matte, you're going to have like all that shine cut out, or at least for the most part. Um, so that satin is kind of like an in-between. So okay. what I would recommend, and I haven't tried this personally, so it might be one of those things where you do like a little micro painting and then do the satin and then do the gloss over it just to see. Um, but I would try that with like a smaller painting and see if that improves the look of the satin to more of a glossy substrate, what you're used to. All right. That makes sense. Yeah. Because uh, I was see seeing that like the next day and I was like, wait a minute. Like you could see, and you can't see it like crazily. Like obviously I'm just being an artist and focusing on it, hyper focusing right. on it. But you know, when you tilt it at a certain degree on the, you know, in the light, you can see like the, almost like the foggy streaks on top of it. And I'm like, oh, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, we're trying to say, we're trying to, maybe you can help me out on this. We're talking about Gambar. Uh, do you use Gambar? You're an oil painter. Does oil painter yeah. use Gambar? Can you do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I use it sometimes. I use it sometimes. Um, lately, I've been using this uh, solvent-free gel. Solvent-free gel? Yeah, like this. there's a solvent-free gel you can use for the same kind of effect, usually. What are you using the Gambar for? So uh, the topic was that I use the satin Gambar for uh, the cardinal painting that I did. And I noticed the next day after it dried and everything like that, it left almost like foggy, um, like a foggy sheen over it. <clears throat> and it kind of like, it, it toned down a lot of the saturation on the painting. And left it, I don't know, foggy, I guess is the word. Did you use the so did you I use didn't the know if I applied it wrong. Okay. No, did I just you... used it by itself. The painting was completely dried, like completely dried. Is it so a there was no finish? paint left over to mix into it. So yeah, that's what we were discussing that I used the satin one. Yeah, that's what it is. The so. satin finish one. 
Yeah. That's yep. great. So question, because um, I suggested that she might be able to use um, the gloss over the satin. Would that change anything? Have you tried anything like that? I've never tried anything like that. Uh, okay. I usually stick with just like what it says. Like if I, I, I used to use this high sheen finish, like a, a varnish, um, but it's just like, you can't really catch the whole picture. You have to kind of like look at a certain angle sometimes for it. You know what I mean? And that always right. sucks. Like it's cool to have it shiny and everything like that, but um, it, it definitely takes away from the overall feel of the painting. Cause you have to like look at it from a certain angle, but I've never done anything like that before where you can do the double layer. I mean, you can always try. I would I think so. To, I suggested what? doing it on like a small itty bitty, yeah. like, three by three inch painting, like doing the yeah. painting and then doing the satin and then doing the gloss. Just the same. I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea to like a tester. I always love doing that kind of stuff where people are like, I don't think you should do this. I'm like, well, I'm going to try it and see what it, see what it does. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, I'm well, going to try it. Way you're not invested so much. You know, right, so exactly. Like three by three isn't going to be as awful as, you know, doing this painting that you've got 15, 20 hours into. <laughs> totally. Yeah, totally, man. Um, yeah uh but yeah the, the the gloss finish or the satin finish is definitely gonna you know it definitely says what it is on the bottle like it'll definitely have a different kind of sheen on it i would think though that if you're gonna do a double layer like that you might want to have to you probably have to like lightly sand that first layer off though yeah, that's a good oh, you know that's alarming. I, I, I would think that you'd have to just take like a real fine grit kind of sandpaper and, and like take some of that varnish off first i would think so because i mean there's always going to be that undertone kind of effect right yeah yeah i mean it's it's not affecting the painting in an extreme way but i just want to know what it is so that next time i know what you would to not do um, but if it's just right. the satin finish, then I'll just have to get matte finish because I'm usually a matte finish anyway. Um, I usually don't like any gloss whatsoever on my painting, mm -hmm. but uh, I'll definitely have to grab some matte uh, matte gambar and try it out. <clears throat> but I had uh, just gotten, um, I don't know if anybody's ever used the Culture Hustle Black 3.0 but I just got myself a couple bottles of that and some glow-in-the-dark powdered pigments. So we're going to have some fun with those when they come in. Nice. <clears throat> yeah, so have you, have you, have you heard of the Black 3.0 by Culture I have Hustles? heard of it, but I didn't know what it was or anything like that because I've never really looked into it. All right, well... I'm here to educate you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, <clears throat> so pretty much what had happened was this uh, person named Stuart Stemple, I think that's his name, created this uh, black is black with carbon and uh, it is very dark and um, pretty much made it only for himself. He made it not uh, accessible to other artists. So this other dude thought it was very unfair that that was the case and thought that all things that other artists create should be widely accessible to every artist uh, because that's what a part of what artistry is. Um, so he actually made a similar um, formula for it and made this, let me see if I can go find it now like a video of it. I painted one of my machines with it um, right before quarantine hit. <coughs> um, but it very much is like, looks like you're looking into a black hole. It's quite amazing. He has different forms of the black. There's like black 2.0 and 3.0. And, um, and he also has the whitest white as well and uh he just makes a lot of these like really extreme pigmented paints and i will say right now that using the black 3.0 is very similar to the consistency of the max black by eternal <clears throat> it's almost like molasses of a consistency let me see here if it will I'm even allowed to show these. 
forgive any noise in the background. I'm getting coffee. <laughs> That's good. It's a necessity, so you're good. Right. <laughs> Do you, I wish that there was a point where you could <clears throat> have like a little machine right next to your computer and you can send coffee to all of us, Melissa. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> all right. So they have, let me share my screen here. See what they got. All right, so this dude's demonstrating it pretty much. Uh, so this is the black 3.0 painted onto a mannequin's face. <clears throat> and it's pretty black. Like, it's pretty dark. I don't know about anybody here, but... <laughs> that's well, it's hard, it's hard to see with the filter through the lens, but... Or the screen, our own screens, right? But, yeah, like, that looks like a uh, silhouette. It looks like one of those... Um, what do they call them? Those old vignette kind of paintings? Yeah, silhouette. That's that's accurate. Yeah. So he puts like a like a flashlight on it, and obviously, like it's just black. It's insane, and I'm just one of those like little kids when it comes to new art things that I just want to try it and play with it and paint on all of it. And I think it's absolutely fascinating how dark this paint is for real. Um, <clears throat> and it's, it really is that way and it dries matte as well. And it's just absolutely fascinating on how dark, uh, this pigment is and a little bottle of it. It's really, it's very, very, very inexpensive. And the little bottle of it is, um, fairly inexpensive. Um, and it, it lasts forever because it's like molasses. It, uh. <clears throat> will spread very, very, very thin. Um, no, it's crazy that that guy tried to keep it to himself. It'd be like oil painters way back in the day being like, no, you can't have this recipe. Yeah, he, he, his recipe is um, a little more extreme Yeah, because it absorbs about like 98% of protons or something like that. So it really is the darkest dark you could go. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's very weird that he would want to keep it for himself well it sounds um, like somebody was trying to corner a market you know what i mean so i mean i don't know that much about it so i shouldn't even be really like commenting on it but like i think that it sounds like somebody's trying to corner a market and like i i have the formula you have to buy from me now you know kind of thing uh, yeah exactly that's pretty much the the route he's going with it but <clears throat> uh this company here if i can just put the website up it's uh culturehustle.com and they have a lot of other types of paints that are very similar uh, that are not just the black 3.0 like i said he has like the whitest white in the world he has like this mirror pigment or paint that literally as soon as you apply it to any canvas or anything like that you can see your own reflection from uh, the paint it's pretty Pretty amazing. Let me see here. Can <clears throat> show the mirror one. No. Let's see. Again. So this is the <clears throat> The world's mirror, mirrorist mirror chrome paint. <laughs> and he has like examples here. That's like what it looks like when you're done obviously mm -hmm. painting it, which is absolutely wild. Um, what it can look like when it's dried. Um, isn't it absolutely insane the, what you can do with paint? Uh, he has um, powders. He has the well in the dark powders that I got. He's got the white, the absolute whitest white, um, <clears throat> world's brightest white paint. Um, and yeah, it's very, it's pretty white. <laughs> <coughs> but um, yeah, this company is absolutely amazing. Very fun. Makes you feel like a little kid. And uh, I would recommend that everybody go and check it out. 
uh, take a gander. Um, these are what I just bought. These ones here. These glow in the dark powder pigments, just because who doesn't like glow in the dark? Uh, and the funny thing with these <clears throat> these paints, and everything like that, on the back of the black 3.0, it says no, not in, <clears throat> not to use for hair dye or tattoo pigments, <clears throat> which I think is funny. <laughs> Wow, really? Yeah, it says around the back of the bottle. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> it's quite it's quite interesting that I mean, obviously, you have to put that on the back because there are people that would just use that um, in the same way. Even, even with the person <gasps> on the back, I thought mean, about it. Going to use it? Well, yeah, probably. Yeah, but you're not liable now. That keeps, right. that keeps liability off of you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, like when you put like hot on hot coffee cups, you have to put caution hot. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like when you're because you know, that one lady that sued McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah. It amazes me how society has changed in that regard to where you have to literally put an oxymoron type statement on something so that you don't get sued. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty <laughs> ridiculous. I agree with you, Melissa. It's like um, you know, kind of a man, it really paints this picture for us as like a culture, doesn't it? You know what I mean? Like yeah. you can look at it a couple of different <laughs> ways where it's like, well this person's either money hungry or something like that, or you really are really that kind of like, you know, behind that you have to let everybody know that that might burn you. Like, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> kind of sucks, you know? Oh, oh shit. Sorry. Well. Everybody just went for a ride there. <laughs> I just got this new stand and I'm trying to figure it all out. Sorry. It's all good. It's just to be last week through the trying to get my <laughs> set up. It was ridiculous. <clears throat> No, it's okay. I completely agree. Uh, I, I, can, I can just literally. Oh my god, a glam core. You sound like Jason with the bougie lighting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got one? I was looking at those online and I was like, holy crap. <laughs> I've had mine for like two years. Melissa has one. I do not have one. I, uh, I, I'm i actually waiting to. They're great. Those things are They're really right now. <laughs> um. I like that it's portable because it's my shop light and I bring it home to do Zoom stuff. <laughs> nice. Um, it, well, every time I bought something that was, you know, like 20 bucks, it winds up breaking within a couple of months. So I'm just like, Ugh, I don't want yeah, to it's... buy one of these for home. But at the same time, I'm like, dang it. Well, the good thing about it is that like whenever you buy stuff for yourself as an artist, you can, you know, talk to the accountant and figure right. out that whole like write off <laughs> thing. Yeah. <laughs> There's, so that's so one of the benefits of <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, you're allowed so many square feet, you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. <laughs> do it to it. Do it to it, Doug. <clears throat> yeah, my shop is about to get our ceilings redone. So I'm waiting to get new lighting to see how the lighting yeah. is when if they get it done. Yeah, it's it's very exciting actually. Uh, our shop is right below a coffee shop. Nice. And um, the ceilings have been well before the, that coffee shop was Starbucks. I am very sad that I was not there when it was Starbucks. But um, they have obviously they have a bunch of noise and stuff like that that happened. But at the same time, all of the pipes for all of the coffee machines and like the uh, ice machines and stuff like that run right above us. And sometimes it really affects the ceiling because stuff drips and everything like that. So obviously my shop owner made a statement to the landlord that that's, you know, we really can't have stuff like that be happening. Uh, so he, the landlord offered to uh, give us a brand new ceiling, a really brand new ceiling. Nice. So, <clears throat> you're going to laugh yeah. at this. I am right next door to a coffee shop. <laughs> Isn't that the I'm, best? I'm kind of kitty corner for one too. <laughs> and my oh my God, is it? A small business type because I'm in a very small town. So most of the businesses and stuff are not corporations. They're very mom and pop. Um, oh, those are the best. Is, oh, my gosh. She makes such amazing coffee. I love it. 
as my stomach's grumbling right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I well, then this is a this is a poll then that we should start. How many tattooers tattoo within a very tiny radius of a coffee shop or right next door to a coffee shop? Like literally, <clears throat> the uh, population of the city I'm in is like ten, twelve thousand. So it's very small. So to have a coffee shop next to me. There's, you know, if, if there's tattooers out in larger cities and stuff, there's almost a guarantee that there's going to be one very nearby. Huh. Yeah, especially if you are you're in like a college town, like a oh, yeah. like Cardo and I work in, <clears throat> you're gonna have coffee shops galore. Yeah, there's there's like a Starbucks right around the corner for me, and then right below me there's a well, like kind of below and to the left, right? There's a there's a coffee shop, a little more of a mom and pop place. I always try to go to those places anyway, like more mom and pop places, you know? Yeah. There's a really cool uh, vintage shop, like right around the corner from me too. It's really cool to go in. It's called like What the Cork. Yeah. <laughs> yeah as a matter of fact, one of the ladies yeah. that works at the, the local coffee shop just asked if I can do a painting for them. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Nice. Hang it up on the walls. No problem. And she had a bunch Isn't of mushrooms the best? over her shirt and stuff like that. I was like, so you want mushrooms and stuff or what? Some mushrooms and people <laughs> drinking coffee? She goes, oh, that sounds cool. Let's do that. It's like, all right. What? Yeah. That sounds like an amazing uh, idea. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just have them sitting at a, like a, a mushroom table with little mushrooms all over the place and stuff. I'm just imagining. Ah, I love it. <laughs> What's that, Melissa? I'm imagining these coffee fay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It'll be fun. I'll take pictures and send them to you guys. That's Maybe we can do like a little fun. live feed from the coffee shop or something like that. That'd be pretty fun too. There you go. That'd be so fun. <clears throat> I would love that. You guys uh, ever put on your favorite pair of jeans and realize that there's a giant hole like in the crotch and you can't go <laughs> home and you can't go home and change anytime soon? <laughs> Did you just make that realization? Yeah. <laughs> Just now, like right now. I wear suits and leggings, so I don't have that issue. Oh man, that's awesome. Maybe I need to invest in those. Like those right? I've seen those Did actually, those guy those? leggings. <laughs> they look like the pants jeggings. or something like that. Yeah, the jeggings, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know what I have seen though? I have seen the ones that are like sweatpants and they look like jeans, kind of, you know what I mean? Those jeggings. I think I might have to look into those for sure. Oh, those are, those are joggers. Those are so comfortable. They Heck fit yeah. just right. Do they? Oh, absolutely. We have Atomic Ink Jackson says, good morning. Neil Foster says, hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Oh my, my stomach is rumbling crazy right now. Um, uh, Cardo, you'll be very proud of me. I actually... I Yesterday. You did what? <laughs> what did you do? I ate five times. All right, good for you. I had five meals. All right, good. And it's, about, it's about time. Just like how you always have like three breakfasts and four mm. dinners. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I was like, wow. It's like Ricardo right now. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Second breakfast is always better. Every time this guy breakfast. was at a convention with us, he goes, so like, when, when are we going to eat? <laughs> <laughs> All the time. You guys, we just we're like, eat. Ago. We just ate, bud. He's like, no, man, that was a snack. <laughs> <laughs> that was a snack. <laughs> it's time to eat. <laughs> and Jason, Jason always look at you with like a weird face. He was just like, what? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like Ricardo, we just left breakfast just now. It's like, yeah, but like the walk from there to here. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Oh my God, we have Bruno. Hi, Bruno. Hey. How's it going, everybody? Hi, bud. Good What's morning. going on? Bruno. Good morning, Bruno. How's it going? Chilling, chilling here, ready to go. Um, getting ready for my appointment in like, uh, Half an hour, but I uh, just wanted to join in with a little coffee. Say hello. Hello. Is that a Mandalorian mug? No, no, not this one. I do have it, but no, this is like a surfing one. Oh, it kind of looks like a Mandalorian mug. 
<laughs> Maybe I just really a, wanted to be a Mandalorian mug. He's got the big Yoda <laughs> mug. I remember yeah. that. Talking about that, um, the book of Boba Fett is uh, is about to. Uh, they're gonna When's start that? playing it on Disney. Yeah, it is next week, right? Oh, what? <laughs> yeah. So I hope we get to see the Mandalorian again because he's such a cool character. But we'll see yeah. what happens. He is such a cool character. Ugh, Pedro Pascal. Ugh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What a divine human being. <laughs> I'm all about Grogu. All right. Yeah, exactly. Me too. <laughs> I love uh, well, Ahsoka, I love how he too. His name. Oh, um, the little hands. I have my little girl He's right here. There's, there he is, chilling. Little dude. I'm not gonna lie, I got kind of pissy with the whole Disney thing because I ordered this Mandalorian helmet like in July or something and I still haven't received anything about it. Nothing. What? Yeah, yeah. I'm still waiting for them to like tell me that it's lost or something like that. Oh, and nobody's boy. responding. Yeah, dude. It was like a real deal helmet. Like you could wear it and everything too. But we did see Mando walking around in Philadelphia though, so that was pretty awesome. Oh my oh, god, yeah, you got so awesome. hyped for that. <laughs> Dude, I was like, there he is. Look, there's Mando. Yeah, he did it right. He yeah, he did, it. man. He did. I guess he was, uh, he was one of the tattooers from one of the shows. I can't remember which show it was, but he was uh, he's one of the guys that got on the shows and didn't last all the way through or something. I don't know. There was a few of those booths there where they were like the tattoo masters or something, or the ink masters. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we did see a couple of those. They're really cool. What's that, Miss Lo? I've met a few of those guys that are actually really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, every single one of them I've met so far has been super humble, super down to earth. It's like totally different from what they portrayed on the show. Yeah, you know, refreshing to be honest. Absolutely, I agree with you completely because, I mean, if you talk to those dudes and you you get to hear about some of the process, I know that, like, one of the, uh, app, on the application, when you first sign up, they pretty much tell you right away that they can use your likeness however they want to, you know what I mean? And you're, you're kind of signing away that right for them to uh, right. be able to portray you in the dramatic way if you have to be portrayed in a dramatic way for the, for the whole ratings. But it's interesting. But yeah, no, that dude is pretty cool. I talked to him for a hot second, told him nice, nice fucking, you know, nice outfit. Uh, I said, his, I said, that helmet's got to go with everything you wear throughout the week, right? And he's like, ha ha. <laughs> of course, you got to put a dad <laughs> joke in there. Yeah. <laughs> Love it, man. You should have yeah, was... and asked him to take his helmet off to see if he was a real Mandalorian. Exactly. Exactly. Oh my God! What if it was Pedro Pascal the whole time? Been that would have been so awesome. Dude. <laughs> I've seen I've seen those videos where on like some of the Comic Con stuff that some of the guys that play the characters they'll walk around as the character. You know what I mean? Like I think Mark Hamill was actually walking on it one in a stormtrooper outfit one time. Oh my God! So that would be my pants. I would yeah. literally start crying, <laughs> like hyperventilating. Like I don't even yeah. know what I would do. <laughs> yeah, but. So here's the thing. So, like, if you were to see him, would you say, may the force be with you when you left? Or would you just be like, thanks, Mark. Take it easy. <laughs> I mean, depending on what kind of person I wanted to be for his perspective. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't, like, hey. honestly, I, yeah, I think about meeting anybody that I look up to in any sort of way. Like, I think about the first time I would meet Teresa Sharp. And I don't even think I'd say anything. Like, I think I would just, like, mumble. <laughs> and just, like, like oh, yeah, I made it for you. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, come on, Carter, you got to say that story now. <laughs> uh, man, okay. Well, all right. So, like, it's, I went and painted with Jeff Gogoy in Oregon. Uh, one of his, like, uh, one of his classes he had for, like, learning how to oil paint. I, I hadn't oil painted before ever. And I um, was in the class with them, 
and he took a look at one of my paintings and he's like came over to me and talked to me about it he's like i really like this painting did a really good job and i was like uh thanks um i made it for you <laughs> and so, you know i was just like what the fuck did i just say jesus and, uh, <laughs> but yeah it was it was pretty fucking funny man like he was uh he kind of looks at it and he looks back at me and he goes uh thanks and then walks away with the painting <laughs> So. I'm just going to hop in real quickly here. Uh, it's, it's fun to hear hear the conversation, but um, okay. to the uh, to the point of like being nervous when when you meet people uh, at off the map when we had lots of guests come through, uh, it, it was an opportunity for people to freak out like all the time. And um, <laughs> one of the things that we ended up, whether it was good or bad, getting in the habit of is when people were applying, you know, we would allow the party to go on as long as they wanted, right? And uh, what that meant was that if they turned into an asshole after six drinks, we would find out before we <laughs> hired them, not when we're out drinking with Bob Tyrell or somebody who's stressful. I mean, not that Bob's stressful to drink with, he's great to drink with, but people would, you know, again, get nervous and stuff. <laughs> and um, at one point, they were, somebody was like, did you go get beer boarded? And uh, I was like, oh, my God, part of our interview process is, has a name called beer boarding. What That's are we awesome. doing? Um, I don't know if we lasted longer because of that or if that's why we don't exist anymore, but uh, it's an effective system. <laughs> it's a truth teller. Yeah, exactly. The blue London. Oh, and, and gave out. Yeah, he's going to choppy. I, like, I, I, had my, you know, I had my invitation and, and I was like, how are you? Here I go. I have a show. Gotta go oh, by. <laughs> I ran away. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. much it, dude. <laughs> he talked to me. Yeah. Oh, shit. He talked to me. Oh, yeah. Okay, one, last, one last story about Jeff. The first time I met. Oh, no, game. <laughs> That's a bummer. <laughs> you were getting real choppy, bro. And, uh, <laughs> it must have been 20 minutes am i am i slide showing or something what's going on you were uh you're cutting out real hard you get a little choppy there bud <laughs> kind of like robot gabe <laughs> <laughs> we'll, ha we'll have fun we'll catch up oh. with you. sorry okay. about that so I think it's I think it's every single person here has this, well, at least one story of fanboying out or fangirling out at somebody that they've you know looked up to and they see them in person they're like holy shit like me with Jesse Smith at Paradise yeah. Tattoo like all it like both of you boys know exactly how I was feeling the entire weekend <laughs> oh yeah just trying to amp myself like okay I'm gonna <clears throat> I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna interest myself. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I'm gonna interest myself. It's fine, guys. Look at I'm gonna I'm gonna do it, guys. It's gonna happen. Go for it. Let's see. <laughs> and then I finally did, and <laughs> I'm such an awkward person because I'm like I'm like okay, okay, okay. What are you gonna do? You're just gonna you're just gonna say your name. All you gotta do is just say hey, my name is, and then say your name. So then I went up to him. And he was talking to Amy Nichols, and I went up to him like, hi, my name is Kirsten Franklin. And then that was it. I was like, all right, I did it. <laughs> and they walked away. Yep. All right. <laughs> was like, um, okay. And I, like, so, and no, I didn't, see, I didn't walk away. I just stood there. <laughs> <laughs> and, but in my head, I was like, this is such a congratulatory moment because I said my name. I did it. <laughs> and he was just like, so, like, you tattoo? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. I I do that. I, I do that. Yes, I, I have. I, yes. <laughs> yeah. Are you going gonna to take my seminar? I'm like, I, yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take, yep, I'm going to take seminar. Take seminar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, like, have you guys seen uh, that movie Office Space? Yes. Yeah. I felt like that that dude with the glasses, where he kept muttering like under his breath, like certain things. Like yeah. you just deal with like a terrible situation, and under his breath, he'd just be like, "I'm just, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna burn the building down. I'm just gonna." <laughs> <laughs> 
iconic movie, by the way. It's an amazing movie. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a great one. I watched it very, very, very recently. <clears throat> it's like, was that the Absolutely. first time you've seen it? No, like on my mom's, it's one of my mom's favorite movies. Oh, okay. Um, so I've seen that one many, many, many times. That's uh, one of my favorite ever. ones when he's like, so uh, you're going to come and work today? He's like, no, I don't think I'm going to do that today. <laughs> Why not? Because I, I don't feel like it. <laughs> I'm like, yes. Dude. So perfect. <laughs> I love, um, I don't know, I love those little My Night uh, details they add to characters, but I love the scene where he's going into the office and straight up flip flops. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> with his toe beam sticking into the air, like full blown flip flops, no care in the yeah. world. <laughs> that's absolutely amazing. That's that's a baller move to wear flip flops in your work setting. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But that's such a no, that's such a good movie to represent the workplace in a corporate world. <laughs> I'm gonna go with yes. But, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Bruno, what are you working on before your client comes in? Um I'm just uh doing like a little doodle. Um I I do them like every day. Um especially when I get a little free time. Uh, like, you know, like a, a half an hour or 15 minutes. And I just relax into these little drawings. They're, they're, they're a little something along these lines. Oh, wow. That's <clears throat> awesome. It, it, uh, You're doing reveries. It starts like with a little, this is the one I'm doing right now. Like I just did a little, <laughs> like a quick little loose, uh, <laughs> Doodle. and uh like without really thinking about it that's the trick and um and then i just start to uh, give it volume and, and uh it's it's very relaxing so yeah that's what i'm up to and i i filled up this this sketchbook um because it's just so much fun i do it all the time yeah so that's what I'm I'm working on. and my tattoo i'm, I'm doing this cover-up uh of an old cross uh, that a client has in his back and we're going to bring it to life, I guess, in some kind of way. But we still have to talk about it a little bit. I really like that bird that you did, Kier. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I like that bird, too. Is it Vince? Is, it, is, is that, his, that name? his name? Yeah. Um, I, I'm not I remember oh, you were gosh. Like coming up with a name for it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'd asked everybody to help me name him because I wasn't too sure what I would name him. I really liked um, I really liked Mortimer. I really liked that name. And I was like, you do look like a Mortimer. Or a Nigel. He did look like a Nigel. So um, I think that's around what we're going to be naming him. Uh, but I just sold him two days ago. So, oh, wow. Congrats. Uh, I'm going to do some final cleanup of the sides and uh, ship that out and get that going. It came um, out so just... nice. I wonder Thank if you. it's hard to sell it for you. No, uh, actually, I, I kind of knew that it was going to go pretty quickly because everybody has like that um, spiritual connection with cardinals and how cardinals are like the sign that, you know, a loved one is near. So I kind of knew that somebody would pick it up, um, especially with the holiday seasons around. Um, I felt it would be nice to have for somebody to have a portrait of a cardinal. But I really wanted to do it for the whole Crayola uh, aspect of it. I was really trying to go for his process of painting. Um, oh. <clears throat> and the way he does birds and stuff, I was trying to go a similar route. It was kind of just a master study of a uh, bird. But with how right. well that that came out, I think I'm just going to continue to do birds for a little bit. I loved it. I loved it. That yeah, was a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was it was a uh, very tiny, it's a very small painting, probably like the size of my hands. I'm trying oh, to really? stick smaller. <laughs> yeah, oh, it looks bigger. Yeah, I, I'm, I can't do big right now. <laughs> That's one of the things that I think is important to mention too, is that like, you know, people that are looking to get better at painting it is good to start smaller 
for sure. Like you think that you would want to do some bigger paintings because of the brush control thing, everything like that. But actually, like you can learn a lot about brush control with like small paintings, you know, because you can combine a certain amount of space, right? So it actually works out pretty well to to do smaller paintings, I think. Yeah, I, and it feels a lot better when you do a smaller painting, and then at the end of your session, you see how much you actually got done, and it's like, oh my god, it's like it's like done. <laughs> Yeah. Well, even just Where when you do like a stationary dance. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And like you know, and like you said, it's um it's less uh, <coughs> and stuff like that too, yeah. Yeah. I, but I've, also I've, it, like it shows you like the, the minimal amount of brush strokes that you really need to kind of uh, achieve an effect that you're trying to, you know, look for that you're trying to like uh you know illustrate or or make legible. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Absolutely. Um, especially when you have like a nice system to go with. And I just tried to set myself up with that painting so I didn't have to think about like the composition so much. I was just painting it. Um, yeah. So I could focus really on the technical aspects of, you know, applying paint down. Um, and I really, I really enjoyed doing that bird. So we'll, we'll continue to do birds. I have one more wood panel before I actually pick up some more that I'm going to gesso and sand today to get ready. Uh, but usually it's like a two-day process. One day fully just get prepping the wood panel and sanding it and drawing it. And then the next day I had to be painting. Um, Too much work. Too much work. I'd be like, oh, I just want to paint. <laughs> and I, that's why I, I, I like the smaller paintings too. <laughs> yeah. I have a tendency to, to go overboard with panels, uh, but I usually get them when they're all like the imperfect stuff. Um, but I also have a tendency to like gesso six or seven of them at a time. <laughs> nice. Like, okay, yeah. Do this <clears throat> all of these right now. Right. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, that's a that's a good system. It really is. Instead of doing one at a time, because then it's coming out really ready nice. to go. <laughs> Yeah, Melissa, you're really adding some, some real color to that dragon lamb snake foot thing. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you need the be. name, so that I can call him by his name. Right. <laughs> it won't be predominantly blue, but I'm trying to, like, do the glazing to get all the background colors out of there. Oh, glazing is so fun. <laughs> I, I love, that's why I like doing uh, wood panels a lot because you're like, <clears throat> and I noticed that when I was painting that bird, that when you paint with on the panels, you're almost glazing the entire time because those yeah. paints will soak into wood and, you know, then you're just left with that very light opacity painting that you just put down. <clears throat> so the entire painting this process is literally just glazing the entire time. <laughs> have you used those uh, heavy body acrylics yet, Melissa? They have not come in yet. <laughs> what? Yeah. Well, oh I mean, if you think about it, the, the place that I bought it from is all East Coast, and we're in the middle of the holidays. In fact, I've ordered something uh, for a solstice gift for somebody before Thanksgiving and I have to track them down today because I contacted customer service and they basically showed me the same thing that I looked up, which is the reason I contacted them. So it was like, awesome. You what are you doing here? <laughs> like, what are you even helping with? What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Especially hey, when I notated, like when I reached out, I was like, uh, so I checked this it hasn't arrived to the sender or it hasn't arrived to the USPS. So where's my stuff? <laughs> Ask them where my Mandalorian helmet is too. Okay. <laughs> There's Are so many issues with shipping. Battle, you don't want me on that. <laughs> Seriously. Dude, uh, you can, you can handle it for me now. I'm sure. You'll probably get something done. With no, me so what did you... The last time well, I dealt with FedEx, they held my, my package hostage. It was ridiculous. Wow. Really? I tried to set up a, you know, for me to go and pick it up. And they're like, oh, well, you need to contact the shipper. I'm like, why? You're in my state. It's yeah. in the town that I live. 
You yeah, have yeah, yeah. my information. I verified this. Why are you holding my stuff hostage? Yeah. It wound up yeah, going back to exactly. the sender, and then they contacted me from there. Like, wow, that was a waste. You guys are dicks. I did finally get my stuff, though, last week. Yes, nice. it's... <clears throat> Cardo, where did you order your helmet from? Disney. Like, just the Disney website? Mm-hmm. What? Oh, man. Well, okay, everybody manifest right now that Carter's going to get his helmet for Christmas. Like, Christmas time. Right? I hope so. On the 24th. Yeah, right on 12th. the 24th, yeah. On the 24th, the 4th will be with you. <laughs> <laughs> I am one with the force, and the force is with me. That's right. Get you know, I say that sometimes during my meditation sessions. Like, <laughs> a little nerd. <laughs> that, um... <laughs> That came out on for the. I think they said that for the first time on Rogue One, right? Yep, you got it. That's a yeah. great. That's a hell of a movie. Hell of a movie. Oh yeah, dude. Oh, it's such a I fantastic just, movie. I just watched that with my client the other day. They're like, I'm like, so what do you want to watch? She goes, I don't know. I go, you're into Star Wars? And she's like, eh, kind of not really. I was like, okay, so Rogue One it is. It is literally such a good movie. Yeah. Let me ask you this, Ricardo. Did you, when that Darth Vader scene, ending scene came on, did you stop tattooing to watch I did. I was like, okay, watch, watch. watch this. Like, I was like, just check it out. You won't be disappointed. She's like, oh, okay. We watched it. I was like, wasn't that great? She's like, um, mm-hmm. Cool. <laughs> Get out of my shop. <laughs> like, how are you not freaking out at this cinematic, you know, experience that's happening right now? Yeah, that just and, took and, that whole like no scene and just washed it down the toilet. You know what I mean? Like they were like, finally, finally, you guys did some good here, man. Thank God. Yeah, I agree it, with you. Because of that movie, I I had like high expectations for the the trilogy, right? Yeah. I was like, oh man, they're doing it right, you know, like. Yep. And and because of those high expectations, I was very disappointed at the end, but. Like the the trilogy had nothing to do with Rogue One. Rogue One was was a, a well done movie. Uh, yeah, it's think, phenomenal. And then up until you know Mandalorian, dude, it was like definitely my favorite Star Wars stuff for sure. You know what I mean? Uh, as far as it being Rogue One, like that was yeah. my favorite Star Wars stuff. I was like, God damn, finally they're doing it right. right. I can't wait for the, and then the first squadron. episode. Yes. Yeah, the Rogue Squadron is going to be great too. Somebody was like saying that it was pretty much going to be like Top Gun, but with Star Wars shit. And I was like, fuck yes. <laughs> they got the need. Right, I just want to say it was a uh, great hanging with y'all. And I uh, hope y'all have a great day and uh, happy tattooing, happy painting. Today's the day. <laughs> catch y'all on the next one. Take it easy, bro. All right, Bruno. Bye, Bruno. Take care. Have a great one. Bye, everybody. Yeah, I think I'm All right, perfect. I'll have to get yeah, my, this is a good time. Yeah. This is a good time to say goodbye to everybody. So, uh, Cardo, if you want to sign, start signing off, you can definitely do that. If you got to scurry. Yeah. Great, Penny, you moved along quite quickly with this. Thanks, I appreciate it. I'm using a big brush. Flat brush, look at that. It's fucking, yeah. <laughs> this is two two inch brush, so it really gets the job done. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, you do the yeah. Bob Ross thing. Oh yeah, I just smacked the shit out of it. But then I ended up having paint all over my shop and stuff, dude. It would be crazy, right? But I do um, cleaning my brushes. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, That's I end up like, funny. yeah, <laughs> just to be funny about it. And you're like, brr, brr. yep. Yeah. It's good. it's like a you have to right so, but um yeah my name is Ricardo Sturdivant um I work at Candor Tattoo that's C A N D O R Tattoo um I'm on Tuesday mornings tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern time uh this month we're gonna be covering lighting so go ahead and jump on in I think I'm gonna set up a still life tonight take some pictures and post it up on the reinventing the tattoo uh, group community uh, that way if you want to draw along you're more than welcome to. Um, and I think we'll be using our iPad for this one. So that way we can just do some screen share stuff. Uh, even though I really like to do the charcoal, like on paper, but, uh, we'll go ahead and do the iPad this time. 
But uh, yeah, here. Thank you so much for having me this morning, Melissa. It's great to see you again. The painting's looking great. Um, you. If you guys want, reach out to me if there's anything you want to talk about. Thanks for the questions today about the painting. I really enjoyed that. Um, and uh, again, thank you, Gabe. Thank you, Guy and Lauren for all your help, and Sandy for all the behind the scenes work. So that's it. Awesome, Melissa. Do you want to do your sign off here? Sure. <laughs> uh, so I just want to think uh, I have a shop out in Staten, Oregon. Um, you can find me on Instagram at MAC underscore M-I-S-S-A. Hmm. That's pretty much me, small rural town. Uh, you got any questions or anything, reach out for sure. Thanks for having me. I'm not exactly easy to talk to in the morning, so. <laughs> Okay, I'm getting mauled by my cat, so give me a second here. Um, oh, yes, I am Kirsten Franklin, and this is my good buddy, Charlie, who's his butt in my face. But um, <laughs> you can follow me on Instagram at Frankie Things, and um, follow me on Reinventing the Tattoo at Frankie Tattoos Things. And Charlie doesn't have social media because he's not about that life. But uh, can you not bite that? Thank you. Uh, you can find me at uh, Thursdays at uh, we do our Thursday morning fundamental classes, and Charlie might make an appearance there too sometimes. Um, other than that, thank you guys so much for joining today. And uh, I can't really see my face, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I appreciate everybody joining in today, and I love you guys very much. And uh, thank you to the horseman, thank you, Gabe, thank you, Guy. Thank you, uh, everybody that's joining in today. And uh, I hope to see you guys next week. And uh, other than that, yeah, uh, in the way. Other than that, thank you guys so much. This is where we sign off, okay? Uh, I can reach my. Charlie, can you like move? Please, please. <laughs> All right, bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>